Last night I had dinner with an old friend of mine I hadn't seen in 15 years. He looked great. He looked like he stepped out of a time machine. I, on the other hand, according to him, looked like an adult. He was so surprised that I looked like an adult. And I don't know why. How did I act back then? Like a kid? But there is one good thing about him looking so good and me looking like an adult is that he gained more weight than me. That's right. I was the skinny one. As the night wore on, we had a bunch of drinks and probably some food I shouldn't have eaten, and I'm surprised as I am down this week. But we went into some deep things. He'd gone through a lot. As the night wore on, we talked about all the things that had happened to him in the last 15 years. And let me tell you, it was deep. I mean, he has gone through so many things. It's dark. It's sordid. It was salacious. It makes you want to hug your loved ones and never let go. He actually asked me, to tell you folks about it. But I told him this is a low carb living channel and today we're gonna to be talking about cabbage. Cabbages. I hate cabbage. When you boil it, it smells terrible. That's what my mom did when I was growing up. She'd boil it to death and try to make us eat it. I literally gagged with every bite. It was so disgusting. For the life of me, I couldn't understand why anybody would willingly put it in their mouths. Who was the crazy person that put this in their mouth the first time and said, we gotta eat this, it's good. Now, years later, I think I know why I hated it. Turns out there's a gene in our DNA responsible for whether or not we like cabbage. What you really don't like if you have this cabbage-hating gene is a compound called glucosinolate. Whether or not you can actually taste it or not depends on your ancestry. About 30% of the English population can't taste it. About 50% of the population have one copy of the gene and can taste the bitterness. About 20% have two copies of the gene. They can't stand it. But get this, among Native Americans, 98% of them don't have the gene at all. Pretty cool. So here I am, 47 years old, and I supposedly hate cabbage. Except coleslaw. I love coleslaw. And sauerkraut. Love sauerkraut. And I really love Dot's braised cabbage recipe that she did for this channel. I can't get enough of it. And I like cabbage raw on salads. Other than that, I hate the stuff. What's actually going on, I learned, is if you boil it, you release a stinky gas called hydrogen sulfide. Boiling it destroys a chemical called myrosinase. That's an enzyme that turns glucosinolates into isothiosalinates. These compounds are incredibly anti-carcinogenic. They help stop cancer. Lightly steaming your cabbage doesn't destroy these enzymes. So you can still cook your cabbage and eat it too. Yum yum. Even if you don't care about the anti-cancer qualities, there's something else wonderful about cabbage. It's amazing for our digestive systems. Natural chemicals in it called mucilaginous polysaccharides can actually help heal your stomach of ulcers over time. Way back in the 40s, they did studies on this. Stomach ulcers healed six times faster than the natural treatments at the time. And intestinal ulcers healed three times faster. Cabbage is also a great source of beta carotene, something that helps the liver purge itself of toxins. I'm using cabbage right now to treat a problem I've had my whole life, irritable bowel syndrome, also known as IBS. My IBS symptoms usually go away when I stay low carb. My doctor thinks I have celiac disease, but he hasn't actually done the laboratory test to determine if that's really the case. That's fine. I have no need for wheat in my low-carb life anyway. Okay, I know what you're thinking. If cabbage is so good for us, why don't we just eat 40 pounds of the stuff a day? Mm -hmm. Sadly, there's a drawback to eating cabbages, kale, and other cruciferous vegetables. And that problem is goitrogens. These compounds interfere with the thyroid's ability to absorb iodine. People with thyroid conditions should probably avoid eating cabbage with any regularity. But most people are probably not going to have any problem with it, particularly in countries like the U.S., which fortifies table salt with iodine. Or if you eat a lot of fish or crustaceans, which have a lot of natural iodine in them. Anyway, that's a lot of stuff about cabbage. Dot's going to be making more recipes with cabbage in them in the future at my request. We're talking sauerkraut and kimchi here, people, so stay tuned. Okay, so how did it go this week? Yay, I'm down a little. A smidge more than a pound. I should have lost more because I'm really heavy right now and it's easier for me to lose weight. But I did imbibe alcohol this week and that definitely stops weight loss. It also makes you hungry and I ended up snacking on too much cheese and nuts. It's okay to have alcohol occasionally when you're low carb, but you should not expect to lose weight when you're doing it. Anyway, I was good at work again, though it almost went south. Somebody brought in these little Chick-fil-A things. It's like, there's a little bit of bread and they have like a little piece of meat and it's breaded. So 
you know, everybody was getting them and they, it's Chick-fil-A. So I took one and I started peeling off the, the breading and I had this little lump of like meat that was boiled in oil or whatever they do to it. And I ate it because I wanted to enjoy the wonder of free food in the office and it was terrible and I didn't like it. And so it was a waste of time and I feel a little bit ashamed of it, but I don't think that caused me not to lose any appreciable amount of weight. Oh yeah, I made one other mistake this time around. I had too much steak in one sitting. About 14 ounces with Dot at the Outback after visiting her mom in the nursing home. I'm a big guy and I can have more protein, but most people only need about four ounces per meal. Too much protein turns into glucose or sugar and turns into fat. Body's gotta do something with it. Anyway, I ate too much and I drank, well, I wouldn't say too much, but I drank and that didn't help and I'm gonna try to stay out of restaurants this week. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit that little bell notification icon. You don't wanna miss out on future stories of my IBS, drinking with my wife, or the joys of eating cabbage. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.